bueno, yo pienso que es lo que haría cualquier esposa en mi lugar, ¿no? Este, estar con, con su esposo en momentos uh, difíciles que son los que está pasando en este momento. Emma Coronel Laispuro sounds like the ideal supporting wife, doesn't she? Well, there are some dark and mysterious layers underneath the happy wife facade, and this is only natural, considering Emma is married to drug kingpin Joaquin Guzman, otherwise known as El Chapo. After El Chapo's third and final arrest in 2016, he was extradited to face life in the United States' highest security federal prison, and he's never getting out. In this context, El Chapo's family has started talking about him to the media. How was the drug lord behind closed doors? Was he a family man or did his ruthless, violent behavior extend to his family? Here's everything we know. El Chapo exposed by his family. Joaquin Archivaldo Guzman Loreda was born on April 4, 1957, in Latuna, Mexico. That's a very tiny village of 150 people in the mountains of the Sinaloa region. Yep, his infamous cartel would simply bear the name of the region he was born in. El Chapo's life was defined by his father. On one hand, his father introduced him to the narcotics trade. He was growing marijuana plants for a local dealer, and he got his son to lend him a hand when he was a teenager. On the other hand, El Chapo's dad was physically and emotionally abusive, and sadly, instead of realizing the negative example, El Chapo Chapo copied his father's behavior. It was his coping mechanism in a world where masculinity was seen as toughness and aggression. But El Chapo took these toxic traits to a whole new level. During El Chapo's 2017 U.S. trial, his former bodyguard, Isaias Valdez Rios, described how El Chapo beat two men senselessly for over three hours. Eventually, he got bored as they weren't moving anymore. So he shot them both in the head and threw them into a large bonfire. Another time, El Chapo caught an Ariano Felix cartel member and decided to punish him himself. El Chapo kept the poor man inches away from death in a wooden structure for days. He was interrogated, and when he didn't say what El Chapo wanted to hear, he would be shot, but not fatally. El Chapo buried him alive a few days later. These are the things El Chapo would do with his own hands in the 2000s, years after establishing his giant drug empire, the Sinaloa cartel. He didn't have to do this. He had thousands of violent men working for him, willing to do his dirty bidding. The thing is, he liked the blood. It made him feel powerful, so perhaps it's hard to imagine that parallel to all this, El Chapo was a family man. In 1977, El Chapo married his first wife, Alejandrina Marie Salazar Hernandez. He was 20 years old at the time and working for Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, or El Pedrino, the boss of the Guadalajara cartel and the father of all modern cartels. El Chapo and Alejandrina went on to have four children, Archivaldo Ivan, Jesus Alfredo, Alejandrina Giselle, y Cesar Guzman Salazar. El Chapo would have somewhere between 10 and 20 children children in total, and his boys ended up working for his cartel, one way or another. Sometime in the 1980s, El Chapo and Alejandrina broke up, and El Chapo married Griselda Lopez Perez. Griselda also gave birth to four children, Ovidio, Griselda Guadalupe, Joaquin, and Edgar Guzman Lopez. Two boys from each marriage would become El Chapo's most trusted servants, Ivan, Jesus, Ovidio, and Joaquin. Known as Los Chapitos, the four most trusted sons of the world's most notorious drug kingpin. As the IT team has reported for several years, federal drug investigators here in Chicago consider El Chapo's sons in charge of the Sinaloa cartel that remains this area's largest trafficker of heroin, cocaine, and methamphetamines. Los Chapitos never spoke openly about their father, nor did they speak to the media, really. After all, they are convicted drug lords working hard to escape justice as they're making their millions, killing their enemies, and smuggling the world's most destructive drugs. But their actions speak volumes, exposing El Chapo's personality in a pretty clear Way. After El Chapo's arrest in 2016, the DEA thought this might be the beginning of the end for the notorious Sinaloa cartel, but since then, the cartel has only grown larger and more powerful. Ivan and Jesus, El Chapo's oldest sons, built state-of-the-art labs and expanded the smuggling routes throughout Mexico and to the rest of the world. Today, the Sinaloa cartel is the most powerful criminal organization in Mexico. His sons were destined to assume the throne of the Sinaloa cartel. Even though their father is believed to have dozens of children, these four were groomed early to take over his expected absence. Yep, El Chapo groomed his sons to be drug lords and carry on his empire after his demise. El Chapo simply repeated his father's pattern. One, he taught his sons the drug trade from when they were teenagers. They really didn't get a chance at another life or career path. Two, he showed them the only thing he knew, violence, abuse, and aggression. In El Chapo's world, this was the only way you get things done. And this showed all too well when Obedio was arrested in 2016. Obedio and Ivan had been on a DEA do not deal list 
since 2012 for money laundering and drug trafficking. But after their father's arrest, the DEA began an operation to arrest them and extradite them to the U.S., hearing of more violence caused by Ovidio. They now say this drug lord, nicknamed the Mouse, has ordered the murders of informants, a rival drug trafficker, and a popular Mexican singer who refused to perform at his wedding. On October 17th, the DEA and Mexican military tried to arrest Yvonne, but he got word of the raid soon enough and was able to escape and rally an army to his aid. The final raid leading to his capture and extradition, a gun battle. The same night the military raided Ovidio's safe house, Ovidio's response was to fire back, even though he was seriously outnumbered. Helmet cam video from the October 17th assault on cartel operatives in Culiacan. This ended with eight dead and 20 wounded after a gun battle between heavily armed cartel commandos and Mexican security forces. Government officers outgunned by the cartel, including this Sinaloa sniper taking aim from a gutter. Chaos in Culiacan, home base for Sinaloa cartel operations and the beginning of a cocaine, heroin, and meth pipeline direct to Chicago. When he realized he wasn't getting out alive, he threw away his guns and came out with his hands up. Just as Ovidio was getting arrested, thousands of Sinaloa Sicarios stormed the house, killing every officer in their way. That day, Ivan Sicarios released dangerous prisoners, set fire to cars to block main roads and intersections, and invaded the local airport. It was complete bloodshed, just to intimidate the police into releasing Ovidio. Sadly, the Mexican president, Andres Manuel Lopez Abrador, gave in and ordered Ovidio's release. In January 2023, Ovidio would be arrested and sentenced to life in prison anyway. But again, his his brothers responded by killing officers and civilians and invading airports. 29 people lost their lives just because El Chapo's family was protesting over Theo's arrest. This just goes to show how El Chapo really is. In his mind, there is no separation between work and family. His sons carried his work and copied his behavior perfectly. They're vicious leaders and violent criminals who don't put any value on human life. And sometimes El Chapo pays the price for treating his sons like war machines. On May 8, 2008, El Chapo's 22-year-old son, Edgar, was gunned down in a parking lot, one of the many victims of the war between cartels. At his memorial, Edgar's mom, Griselda, said she was tired of her sons being labeled as drug traffickers. Yeah, well, that's their line of work. In saying this, Griselda said something about El Chapo too, that he is, in her eyes, the beginning of the end of this family's suffering. He created an evil empire and corrupted his sons to be a part of it. They were too young to choose for themselves and now it's too late to go back. They're either dead, in prison, or wanted by the DEA. El Chapo's love life didn't end with his first two wives. In 2005, he had a brief marriage to a woman named Estela Peña. Then two years later, he married someone else, 18-year-old Emma Coronel Aispero. Yep, Emma was much younger than many of El Chapo's daughters. El Chapo's firstborn daughter, Rosa, was born in 1977. We are afraid that something could happen to my children because of all that. I can have more business, more things. I operate my own business, but because of that, I can open more businesses. Emma Cordonel Aispora was born in San Francisco, California on July 2nd, 1989. She was the daughter of Bianca and Inez, a cattle rancher. But Inez was also an active member of the Sinaloa cartel. That's right, Emma's dad worked for El Chapo. In 1989, when Emma was born, El Chapo was already a feared criminal. And it was exactly in 1989 that El Chapo became the leader of the notorious Sinaloa cartel killing his way to the top of the pyramid after the Guadalajara cartel was destroyed by the DEA. But Emma wasn't the kind to be shocked at this kind of life. Her father was in the business, and her uncle, Ignacio Coronel, was one of Mexico's most dangerous cartel criminals. Emma grew up in a dual world. On one hand, violent cartel men. On the other hand, high school beauty pageants and California riches. She learned that that's what she was supposed to do as a girl. When she was in high school, Emma won the coffee and guava beauty pageant. And this is the questionable context in which she came to El Chapo attention. It's safe to say Emma was an object of desire for El Chapo, who was divorced three times and 32 years her senior. The two started a heated relationship right after the pageant. It's hard to say what was the trigger. El Chapo's menacing army filling the room, Emma's lust for money and status, or innocent love. 
Emma celebrated her 18th birthday on her wedding day as she married El Chapo in a lavish ceremony. He was 50. Among the wedding guests were tens of high-ranking Mexican army officials and politicians. Emma and El Chapo's relationship had been murky from the start, at least from the outside. When the two got married, Emma claimed she had no idea what her husband did for a living. But this is not plausible for a number of reasons. First of all, Emma's immediate family were active members of the Sinaloa cartel. She definitely knew what they did. Second of all, El Chapo was already a world-famous drug lord. There was no way Emma wouldn't have heard his name before. Plus, there were papers and articles on his arrest and prison escape. In 1993, he'd been arrested in Guatemala for murder and drug trafficking. He was extradited to Mexico and sentenced to 20 years in prison, but he bribed his way out of the prison in 2001. It turns out he spent around $2.5 million in bribing officials so that he could escape in a laundry cart. So yeah, Emma probably knew what her husband did, but she also knew that she had to deny knowledge and involvement to the press if she didn't want the police on her tail too. As it turns out, Emma not only knew everything, she was an active part of the Sinaloa cartel. She was clearly exposed to uh, all of the things that Chapo was uh, in control of, the movement of narcotics across the border into the United States, and obviously the flow of money back. Then there was another problem. El Chapo has had many wives, at least the three we know of. According to Annabel Hernandez's book, Emma and the Other Two Narco Women, El Chapo never divorced his first wife, Alejandrina Salazar. This means that Emma might not be El Chapo's legitimate wife. Her role was simply to be the wife. That's what her role was, period. The guidelines reflect somebody who's involved in a very large conspiracy of which they're a very tiny person. And that's what the fact showed. That's what the judge saw, it's what the government saw, we've been saying this from the beginning. When Emma was confronted with this by the media, she just said that she and El Chapo were married under the law of the divine, whatever that means. El Chapo is known for his many marriages and dozens of affairs. Is Emma truly behind these or is she protecting her husband in the eyes of the media? Emma Coronel is not the innocent individual that she pretends to be. She is very cold, calculating, and a very cunning woman. Here's where it gets interesting. Unlike El Chapo's former wives and children, Emma has made many appearances on TV, discussing their relationship publicly and fiercely defending her husband in front of well-known accusations. Throughout Emma's interviews, she maintained a clear stance of defending El Chapo, no matter the gravity of the charges. Bueno, yo pienso que es lo que haría cualquier esposa en mi lugar, no, este, estar con con su esposo en momentos. Uh, Difíciles que son los que está pasando en este momento. Emma and El Chapo were married in 2007. On August 15, 2011, Emma gave birth to twin girls, Emily and Maria. Emma went to California to give birth as she had dual citizenship. As she spoke about this to the media, she revealed that she isn't really in the dark about El Chapo's illegal work. Como yo nací allá, se supuso que era buena idea que también fueran ciudadanas americanas. ¿Por qué es buena idea ser ciudadano americano? Por si quieres vivir en otro país, pues Estados Unidos se me hace buena elección. So Emma's not completely oblivious to the dangers of raising her children in the Sinaloa cartel. There's another clue here. On the girls' birth certificates, the father is completely left out. That's right. It looks like Emma is protecting the girls from any run-ins with the law. And perhaps she was right in doing so. Three years after the birth of the twins, El Chapo was arrested and sentenced to prison in Mexico. This was El Chapo's second time in prison. And by now, he had more money and power and infiltrated people people than ever before, so he knew he could escape sooner rather than later. In an ironic twist, his oblivious wife helped him escape. This time, El Chapo was held in a maximum security prison, so he couldn't pull off the laundry cart stunt again. But he learned something. Although the prison was filled with security cameras, the showers were camera-free. So he had people dig a tunnel underneath his shower. And guess what? His mile-long tunnel led straight to a construction site where Emma had just purchased a property. So El Chapo escaped into his new home straight into the arms of his family. Emma and Los Chapitos were waiting for him. By now, Emma really couldn't hide her knowledge or involvement in the Sinaloa cartel anymore. Whether she helped her husband escape out of love or fear, the jury's still out on that. El Chapo couldn't stay on the run forever. He'd escaped from prison twice, and the DEA was fighting hard to have him extradited to the U.S. and tried for his crimes on American soil. In 2016, El Chapo was once again arrested. When he was sent to New York on a plane in 2017, El Chapo looked truly mortified. It was like, for the first time in his life, he was coming to terms with the gravity of his actions. Or perhaps he shed a tear when he realized he would never escape prison again. That was not a tear of guilt or remorse. After all, this was the same man that, a few 
few years before had killed a Sicario with his bare hands, sewn his face to a football, and left him on the town hall's doorstep. During his trial, El Chapo was found guilty of 10 charges, with several people, including El Mayo's family, testifying against him. This conviction, we expect, will bring a sentence of life without the possibility of parole. It is a sentence from which there is no escape and no return. From his heavily mediatized trial, it was pretty clear El Chapo was a monster. Stories of murder, bribery, and violent trafficking shocked the jury and everyone watching. One witness testified to El Chapo making a $100 million bribe to a former Mexican president. El Chapo was involved with the worst and had corrupted thousands of people, from vulnerable teens to the top dogs in the Mexican government. But when Emma was interviewed during El Chapo's 2018 trial, she said the witnesses have lied in order to get lighter sentences. Pero pues obviamente hay que recordar que esas son personas que tienen, que les dieron vida, ¿no? Entonces pues ellos van a, a decir cualquier cosa o para tener algún beneficio, entonces pues no, no me, no me, no me clavo mucho en, en, en esas cosas. Honestly, is she not horrified to all of El Chapo's actions? Does she truly believe his innocence? Or is she so scared of him? She will say anything to the media. During El Chapo's trial, Emma became a prominent figure in the media. She was at his trial every single day, waving hello and blowing kisses to him across the sea of people. It was a kind of love and support people weren't expecting to see for a man so brutal. So, que estás, eh... Desde que tú llegas, se le ilumina la cara al chapo. Es algo que nunca habíamos visto los periodistas cuando vimos las audiencias, pero cuando tú entras a corte, se le ilumina la cara. Te saluda. ¿Qué sientes en ese momento cuando lo ves de esa manera? No, pues muy contenta. Muy contenta de que a pesar de, lo, de la situación en la que está pasando, de lo fuerte que, que es todo esto para él y para nosotros, este, ver lo que sonreía o que, o que se emociona, pues es... Es una tranquilidad que me da como que... Ah. But there was something else that gained attention. Emma remained loyal no matter what. People testified to El Chapo having people tortured and killed. They also testified to his myriad of mistresses. Nothing seemed to phase Emma. The dark reason why? It turns out Emma already knew everything her husband did. According to Rolling Stone, a few text messages between the married couple were played in court. In the text, the two talked about El Chapo's bloodiest affairs as casual as chatting about the shopping list. Then they joked about their kids growing up and joining the car tell soon. El Chapo wrote, Our Kiki is fearless. I'm going to give her an AK-47 so she can hang with me. Yeah, they weren't even hiding it in their text messages, even though they knew they'd be tracked by the DEA. So it's pretty clear Emma is not oblivious to the Sinaloa cartel. And it's all too clear how El Chapo is as a businessman. Sadly, he's just the same as a father, encouraging his children to take arms and keep his empire at the top of the illegal game. But the question remains, how is El Chapo as a husband? Emma has never spoke publicly about having El Chapo as a partner, but there are clues here and there. The biggest clue is her fierce devotion. She's an extremely faithful wife who supports him through lengthy trials and horrible accusations. It seems like she is the ideal loving wife, but there's another dimension. Emma protects El Chapo fiercely in front of the media. She denies his guilt and points fingers at his enemies. Creo que sí, de repente me, me molestan como cualquier persona, ¿no? Que, que estén diciendo cosas de una persona cuando tú sabes que could she be afraid of El Chapo, controlled by the notorious kingpin, just like the rest of his cartel? He really controlled his entire empire, and he did it on purpose. Chapo didn't trust anyone. Does El Chapo control his wife too? Is her tireless support a submissive response to a dangerous controlling husband? Does El Chapo dictate what she says to the media? Or is Emma just trying to ensure a safe life for her husband and her two daughters? If Emma openly admitted and talked about El Chapo's actions, two things could happen. One, El Chapo might want to get his revenge. After all, cartel kingpins are known for ordering assassinations on informants left and right. Two, the authorities might seize her assets. All of Emma's luxurious houses cars and clothes were obtained from blood money, and who would want to lose such a lavish lifestyle? Here's another clue. After El Chapo's arrest, when Emma started getting a lot of media attention, she used this to pursue an even more luxurious, albeit independent, lifestyle. She created an Instagram account and gathered over a half a million followers. Then she registered a fashion line trademark called El Chapo. She was planning on launching it soon. Now, she wasn't just making the headlines as El Chapo's devoted wife, but as a glamorous New Yorker who people wondered where she got the money from 
from? Well, we all know the answer to that. All the while, she appeared on TV pleading for El Chapo to be treated better in prison. Emma complained the guards were always chatting outside of El Chapo's cell and that his blood pressure was up, almost as if she expected him to have the lavish conditions he had at home. Journalist Annabel Hernandez said that Emma is simply impossible to analyze, and since she isn't easy to read, what she says about El Chapo is also not as simple as it sounds. After El Chapo's arrest in 2016, Emma was asked to do a Los Angeles Times profile. That's when she made it clear she will follow her husband through anything. Emma also revealed something about El Chapo's temper. Apparently, he is a very level-headed man. It's hard to imagine all of this knowing what El Chapo does to his enemies, many times by his own hand. And here's the thing, El Chapo wasn't just violent with his enemies or even with officers. El Chapo has a known history of physical violence and abuse toward his ex-wives and mistresses. It's probably unsurprising that a man who uses abuse as a means to an end behaves similarly in his household. And according to the New York Times, El Chapo has famously used spyware to monitor his wives and mistresses. Yeah, it just gets more abusive. It's safe to say El Chapo is controlling with everyone around him. He is constantly afraid he will lose his power if he doesn't know everything about everyone all the time. This is wrong on so many levels, especially when it comes to spying on your partners or physically abusing them. Is this the case with Emma too? Is she being intimidated into showing the good wife front? When Emma was confronted with El Chapo's known history of violence toward his ex-wives and mistresses, Emma said she doesn't know of such a thing and he was never violent with her. She also denied the guilt of her father and uncle who were notorious cartel members and were arrested on drug trafficking charges. She insists they've been wrongfully charged. Slowly but surely, we can see how Emma protects her whole family and is willing to participate in their life of crime. One last cue paints the full picture. In 2021, Emma was arrested for conspiracy, trafficking, and helping El Chapo escape from prison back in 2015. Emma Coronel Aspero was arrested yesterday at Dulles International Airport in Virginia. She faces a court hearing today accused of being part of Joaquin Guzman's massive criminal operation. November 2021, she pled guilty and finally admitted her involvement in the Sinaloa cartel. She was sentenced to three years in prison. After pleading guilty earlier this year to helping the Sinaloa drug cartel, the wife of imprisoned Mexican drug kingpin Joaquin El Chapo Guzman was sentenced to three years in prison on Tuesday by a U.S. judge. Before being sentenced, 32-year-old Emma Coronel Aspuro pleaded with the U.S. District Judge to show her mercy. Yeah, this is Emma's plead. With all due respect, I address you today to express my true regret for any and all harm that I may have done. And I ask that you and all the citizens of this country forgive me. Emma will also forfeit $1.5 million and will be supervised for four years after her release. The innocent, devoted wife mask certainly fell when Emma was arrested. She's part of the whole cartel life. She's been in it all, all of her life. Her family's involved with the cartel. She's cartel royalty. After her conviction, her lawyer spoke publicly, explaining that Emma was swept into the world of drugs and the Sinaloa cartel as a young teenager. She married El Chapo on her 18th birthday. She didn't really have any other choice. And once she was wedded to one of the world's worst criminals, it was too late to back out. To this day, Emma defends her husband fiercely. But is it out of love or fear? Are her kids even safe now that the cartel knows she's she cooperated with the authorities? And will her devotion stand even as the years pass? She is released and El Chapo remains behind bars. Hey, thanks for watching. What do you think about El Chapo's family? How do they reveal the drug lord's personality? Let me know what you think in the comments section and remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more.